What time is it, boys and girls? Say, kids, what time is it? <laughs> okay, gang, let's go. No, it's five o'clock somewhere. No, it's time for the latest monthly update for 365 subscription users of PowerDirector. This October 2024 update was a big one and certainly makes up for the almost non-existent September update. This one includes 41 new titles, 10 new transitions, 5 effects filters, and 2 new tools. And to think all these new templates come out right after my last video about the snowball effect of too many templates slowing down the startup time for the program. Apparently, Cyberlink expects everyone to have a 4 terabyte drive to store all these things for now and into the future, as well as a top-of-the-line, latest and greatest CPU to speed up processing of all the information about the multitude of templates. There's a lot of ground to cover here, so rather than make one long video, which even I tend to fall asleep before the end, I'm going to cut this update video into two separate and shorter videos. This first will cover all of the new templates, transitions, and effects, while the second will cover the two new tools. Now this month, like the previous half dozen or so, I got a forced silent download of all the latest titles, transitions, and overlays without me having to ask for them or doing any kind of update request. If the updates are all pushed out to the users apart from the actual update, then just what is contained in the update. I suspect that all the templates are included just in case the user hasn't been updated with those templates. But if they've already been pushed onto the user, then I suspect the rest of the update is just bug fixes to the core of the program. What bug fixes, you may ask? Unlike many other software providers, Cyberlink is very secretive about what they fix and what they haven't fixed. If you click on the blue camera icon in the upper left corner of the program, then it should read out the latest version as 0927.2. If yours is less than that, then use the Cyberlink Application Manager program to check for, download, and install the latest version. Let's take a quick look at what's included in the October update. There are new Callout titles 21 through 40. These 20 new titles join the previous 20 in the subcategory for titles called Callout. A few of these contain some witty quotations, but several contain the same saying, such as Callout 32, that a few harmless flakes working together can unleash an avalanche of destruction. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. Are they talking about me? Further down in the list of what's new, there are glitch titles 11 through 20, which are 10 more of these colorful titles to join the previous 10 in the stylize subcategory. One is glitch 11, which has its default text of Y2K party. I always thought that Y2K referred to the year 2000. So where has this title been for the past 25 years? Even further down in the What's New category are retro titles 01 through 10, which are another 10 titles which reside as part of the Motion Graphics subcategory. For example, Retro 06 is one that I'm not sure why they think it should be called retro, other than the fact that it doesn't use any bright, splashy colors, but that can all be changed in the title editor. And all of the new retro titles look similar in concept to the long time existing ones that are available in the Vintage Titles pack, such as Vintage Title 08. From the Transitions menu and in the What's New category, there are 11 new transitions called Switch 01 through 11, which join others as part of the basic subcategory. I'm not really thrilled about any of these new transitions because they all look similar to existing ones found in the simple subcategory. And each pair of the new Switch transitions seem to be just a mirror image of the previous one. 
For example, let's look at switch 01 in the preview window, which shows the transition spinning counterclockwise from scene A to scene B. Now let's look at switch 02, which shows the same exact effect except spinning clockwise from scene A to scene B. Was it really necessary to create these as two distinct transitions? Whatever happened to using the Modify button, which would bring up the Transition Settings window, allowing the user to make various choices, such as reversing direction? Looks like that no longer exists as an option, and Cyberlink has opted to call it two different transitions, when in reality is it is the same effect, only reversed. Over on the Effects menu, and under Filters and LUTs, and finally, under What's New, are the new Vlogger filters, 01 through 05, which are part of the Vintage subcategory. Once applied to an image, there are no settings or options other than changing the strength of the filter. Now let's try them out by dragging the built-in media file food.jpg down to the timeline. I'll then click on Effects at the top, and then Filters and LUTs. Then either on the What's New or Vintage to access the five new filters. I'll select the food image on the timeline, and then click on Vlogger 01. As you can see, the result is a very bright, somewhat overexposed image. Now let's try Vlogger 02. And that result is a darker image, but somewhat truer colors. Let's try Vlogger 03, which gives a much better exposure, but the colors seem oversaturated to me. The french fries look just too yellowish. Well, I'm getting hungry from watching all of this, so let's move on. I've never been a big fan of these kinds of filters, such as these, because they all seem to be an all-too-easy method of changing color and saturation levels, which is something I'd rather do using the more tedious but exacting method by using the color adjustments made by clicking on Edit, and selecting Image and Color. And the other big difference is that the effects filters do not allow you to apply to all with just one click of a single button, which is something that can easily be done in the Edit Color menus. Well, that's my opinions and I'm sticking to them. My recommendation is to go ahead and download the latest version. Play around with the new titles and transitions to see how you like them. And try your luck with some of the new filters on various images that you may have. Part 2 of this video will show you the two new tools that are part of the October update. And don't forget that if you find any template that you dislike and think you'll never use, just right-click on it and select Delete from Disk. It's time to put PowerDirector on a diet and keep it from becoming fat.